Hey everybody, I'm Jacob Castro and welcome to another live stream here on Jacob's Aquarium. Hope you guys are doing good and hope your tanks are doing good as well. Welcome to everybody in the chat room. Hope you guys are having a fantastic 4th of July for those of you in the United States. Let's go ahead and get to your questions. Uh, this is what we do on the Jacob's Aquarium live stream. We answer questions all about the aquarium hobby and I help you guys become better hobbyists to the best of my ability. I don't know everything. There are some questions I can't answer, you know, and there are some questions that uh, are just too generic to answer. Like uh, I remember one time somebody asked me, hey, what type of fish would look good in my tank? And I just paused and I'm like, uh, well, isn't that personal preference? Um, uh, can you tell me more about your tank, like the water parameters and you know what type of look you're going to? It, it would turn into a novel of an answer, a novel of a question. So uh, if we can keep the question short and sweet and simple, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> okay, um, I know you guys have already been asking questions, but um, I'm gonna start from the bottom here. By the way, super chats are available. For those of you that don't know what a super chat is, a super chat is where you can pay to have your comment displayed in the live chat above everything else for a longer period of time than uh, it normally displays in the chat room. Therefore, I have a easier time answering it because I can see it for a longer period of time and it doesn't disappear within seconds because of everybody typing comments into the live chat. Uh, super chats help grow the channel and they help everything that I do here on YouTube. And for those of you that uh, purchase super chats ahead of time, I want to say thank you so much. I really, really appreciate your love and support. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start from the bottom. First question comes from Lord Vader. I remember you from the last stream. You were posting some very interesting comments. <laughs> uh, you said you're asking, do you plan on expanding your pond slash business? Yes, I do. Um, I will be building a bigger pond pretty soon because I need to hold more plants. I run out of plants. Uh, I run out of stock way too quickly, so I need more space to hold more plants. So yes, bigger pond. Possibly a bigger greenhouse in the future, things like that. But uh, my nursery is doing very, very well, and um, I'm extremely uh, happy with um, you know everything I've accomplished there. So, next question comes from Ryan. He says, "How to keep red plants red, Jacob, buddy? <laughs> uh, you keep aquarium plants red, you know, because of the nutrients you have in your aquarium, the lining you have them under." Uh, once again, that's a very generic question. It's kind of hard to answer it without knowing the specific parameters of your aquarium. Um, but I will say generally, you know, for red plants, some, I should actually say some red plants, you can achieve a red coloration in them without high light or CO2 or nutrients or anything. But there are some plants that no matter what, you will need to have them under high light, give them plenty of nutrients in order to maintain their red coloration. Uh, but once again, it depends on the plant depends on your aquarium so if i knew more about either one of those things i'd be ever i'd be able to better help you out so maybe you can post it in the comments or in the chat and i can uh, get back to you on that one next question comes from is there uh, michael he asks is there something i can do to speed up the diatom algae clear up of a new tank uh well i mean you can just go straight for a chemical you can use api algae fix i've used that before works great it you can see you can notice you notice results in about three to four days sometimes even sooner that is really the quickest way to get rid of an algae bloom in your aquarium um, just because it's a chemical it works so quickly uh, just be careful when you use it there are some precautions you need to take in regards to uh, if you have shrimp in your aquarium and things like that and the amount of oxygen you have uh, water movement in your aquarium all those things play a role um, uh, when using this product so just make sure you do your research but uh, API algae fix would be a great product if you're looking for fast results and um, you know you want to get rid of that algae really quickly okay next question comes from um, Andy he says I, w I work at hours can I set my lights to come on at 6 p.m. and go off at off at midnight um, that's a very odd question. Um, I would recommend, I mean, I you said you work, so I guess you're not home to turn your lights on and off manually. Uh, then again, you can put your lights on a timer to come on at any time you want automatically. You don't have to be there to turn on the timer or anything. So 
Um, you can set the timer to have your lights go on at eight o'clock in the morning, go off at five o'clock in the afternoon. Um, you know, that's generally generally what I do with my planet aquariums. I really don't like to go any longer uh, because it seems like you just have a greater chance of growing algae because there's just so much light over the aquarium for such a long time. Uh, but yeah, they sell timers um, a lot of different places. I, I'd recommend actually, if you can, visit a, a hydroponic shop because they have timers for all kinds of things and so many different choices and good prices too. Um, you can definitely find a good timer there. So um, so yeah, check that out. Next question comes from Top Water in California. Horrible. Good for cichlids though. That's not a question. Okay, next one. <laughs> Uh, let's see, is Rotala indica a nitrate absorbing plant? Pretty much all plants are. All plants absorb, you know, things in the water. <laughs> um, I don't know why people will freak out and focus so much on nitrates and nitrites. It's just like, you know, follow the rules, do things accordingly, make sure your tank is cycled, make sure you have plenty of plants growing in your aquarium, you know, just just follow those things and you'll be fine. You don't have to worry about individual water parameters so much, you know. Um, <laughs> next question uh, comes from Rita. She says, I have a question about phosphate. I use RO mix. I use RO mix anyway. I'm told no phosphate is good. Then I am told too low is bad. What am I looking for? Okay, see, that's that goes back to something I've said in many, many videos. You know, a lot of people out there, they make this hobby so complicated you know you you'll see so many videos on on youtube like oh make sure your phosphates are in control make sure this is that make sure that's uh, that is this make sure this is at this specific level this is at that specific level guys i have a planet tank okay i do not test my water parameters at all i do not do anything i don't add any i really don't add anything to my tank I filled it with substrate, okay, I filled it with water, I dechlorinated it, dechlorinated the water, put the plants in, set up the lights over it, let it run, and it's fine, you know, it's doing fine, you just, you don't need to focus so much on, this has to be this way, I know there's lots of confusing information out there, but just generally follow, you know, follow the rules, you know, follow the normal rules of setting up an aquarium, don't overcomplicate it, you know. The biggest, most important thing is just making sure your tank is cycled, okay? And if you have algae problems, you know what to do from there. I've talked about that so many times, you know? Phosphates and all this other crap, I mean, it, I know they play a role in all this stuff, <laughs> you know? But it's like you don't have to be, like, you don't have to focus on it so much, okay? Just relax, relax, relax. Everything is fine, okay? Just follow the rules, you'll be successful. I mean, like I said, I have a tank. I, I don't I don't test for anything. I don't like I'm not testing for nitrates and ammonia and stuff. I, I just know if I follow the rules, let my tank cycle and, you know, let the plants grow. So they're absorbing the excess nutrients and and help naturally, you know, filling naturally filtering the water. Uh, you know, it's just. Um, yeah, that's all you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand the confusion because, you know, so many people are posting videos on YouTube and they overcomplicate it, you know, and I've always, you know, my goal with my YouTube channel from the start has been to make things so simple for you guys to understand. I don't want to, you know, tell you guys, uh, yeah, your nitrates have to be at, you know, 2.2 ppm or something like that. Like, because when somebody hears that, they're like, what, what the heck is, what the heck is ppm, you know? And then they have to go research it. And then once they research what PPM is, they see all these different things like, oh yeah, it has to be at this certain level. And then somebody else will say, no, it has to be at this certain level. And then somebody else will say, but wait, if you, you have your PPMs at this level, then it's gonna affect this one. And then it's like, oh my God, what do I do? You know, it, it can get so complicated, but just don't, don't pay any attention to that. <laughs> okay, next, next question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Um, la, la, la. Uh, we need fishes says you still go to PetSmart. No, I do not. I don't really buy stuff from PetSmart. No. Um, Nathan Fam Tronk says any tiny red plants for nano tanks. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Actually, that is a really. Uh, it's a really, really, 
Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. I'll just say that. So, there are a lot of different plants on the... Let me turn down my volume really quick because I think I'm yelling. There are a lot of different plants out there sold as mini, like Rotala Bonsai Mini or Alternanthera Rhinicki Mini. You know, there's all kinds of plants sold, you know, with that kind of name. Here's the thing, guys, okay? A plant, an aquatic plant, especially a stem plant, you know, even some foreground plants will grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. They will not just stop growing at some point and, you know, they'll just become a little miniature version of the plant. That's not not what happens. So when people ask me like, oh, is there a small plant that I can grow in my aquarium? I'm just like, uh, eventually that plant will become big. There's really no way to control that. I mean, unless you're constantly trimming it, of course. But then again, you do that with all plants, you know. Um, my recommendation is do not pay attention to the names that say, you know, mini, a miniature version of the plant or whatever, or mini or or smaller don't pay attention to that because over time the plant will get bigger and bigger and there's there's really nothing you can do other than to just trim it and and but like I said you can do that with any plant so you can keep any plant you know a dwarf version or a small version it, it really doesn't matter like even for example I, I sell dwarf Sagittaria on my website and I sell um, Sagittaria narrow leaf and Sagittaria broadleaf okay over time, over time, I've seen a dwarf Sagittaria get the same height, same length, same size, okay, as a broadleaf Sagittaria. You would never think that because of their names, right? But they're plants. They grow. They don't stay a certain size forever, you know? Um, in regards to the leaves on some plants, that's an entirely different story, okay? Some plants like dwarf baby tears, for example, the leaves will, you know, stay small. They're not going to get massive. But as far as the plant, as far as it growing, it will get bigger and bigger. It will not stay a certain size. So for those of you that have this misconception about aquatic plants that just because they're named dwarf or named mini or whatever like that, that they're going to stay a certain size in your aquarium, that is not the case, okay? Maybe their leaves will. Maybe the leaves of the plant will, but the size of the plant, its its height, its width, whatever, it will continue to grow. It's not going to stop, okay? So that's really one thing to take into account and to remember before you buy plants. You know, a dwarf plant is not going to stay small, <laughs> okay? Um, next one, next question. Uh, let's see. Best plants for low brackish tank, low end like sad, no, 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 great puffers. Okay, for a brackish aquarium, uh, plants that'll do great in a brackish aquarium, and for those of you that don't know what a brackish tank is, a brackish tank is pretty much a tank that's half fresh water, half salt water, or you can pretty much just call it a fresh water tank with a little bit of salinity in it, okay? And there are some plants that'll grow great in that type of environment. Java fern, for one, is a plant that can grow in a brackish aquarium. And java fern is actually part of the microsorum uh, family of plants. And there are uh, many different types of microsorum plants out there. So do your research, you'll find many of them on the internet, but pretty much all those plants can grow in a brackish environment. There are some other ones. I believe jungle vow can grow in a brackish environment as well. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I might be wrong on that. Um, but uh, there are a number of plants that will grow in a brackish environment. But off the top of my head, plants from the microsorum family are the only ones that I can think about. Okay, so I would give those a try. All right. Um, okay, I'm missing some questions here, but uh, they're coming in a little fast. So uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Wilson Chu says, do you use EI dosing for your pond? <laughs> no, I, um, for my aquatic plant pond, here's what I do, okay? I buy the dry ingredients, the dry fertilizers from greenleafaquariums.com, mix them up in two bottles. I don't even measure how much I dose. I don't even, you know, anything like that. I will just dose a little bit, you know, every day and I'm done, you know? Of course, I don't recommend that, okay? Obviously, I've dosed fertilizers, fertilizers in my pond uh, so many times that I know how much to dose just by looking at it. Of course, for an aquarium, you know, a smaller system, not a 600-gallon pond, you want to kind of control how much nutrients you're introducing. Um, 
but uh, yeah, that's 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 what I use. I don't do any EI dosing or any particular method. I just buy dry ingredients, make the fertilizers, dose them, and that's it. If I have a planted tank, I dose them accordingly to the size of the tank, and that's pretty much it. I don't follow any of these um, uh, weird. Well, I shouldn't say weird, but any other methods where people are dosing like twice a day at a certain time or uh you know a certain dosage at a certain time or some, something like that i just i'm simple i mean just like i've said i'm simple i i'll dose maybe one time a day and that's it you know or one time a week just depends on how many plants are in the tank things like that you know so but simple i like simple <laughs> um okay next question um Waylon Summer says, agreed, I work in a local fish store and even common species like dwarf sage will get four plus inches tall in our displays. Absolutely. So exactly what I said, somebody has already experienced the same thing. And thank you for sharing that Waylon Summers. That really helps prove my point. I really appreciate that. Dead Guy Play says, Jacob dropping knowledge. I've been here three minutes and learned something new. That's what's up. Yep, that's what's up, man. I like to teach you guys things. Uh, we'll, okay, I already answered a question for Wilson Chu, so to be fair, I'll keep going to some other people. Uh, Reckless Gaming says, how many inches of substrate for plants? It really doesn't matter. In my AGA 75P, I have like a 5 inch substrate layer. <laughs> and um, a lot of people, actually, when I made my first video about my AGA 75P, they were like, why did you use so much substrate in your aquarium? You know, they thought it was rather odd. Uh, the thing is, is that I figured that, you know, this is just me thinking. This isn't something I researched or whatever. But my thought was, you know, in nature, you know, when an, when an aquarium plant is growing in nature, there's no end to their substrate. You know, if they're growing in a lake, their roots can go as deep as they want into the earth, right? I mean, unless they hit concrete, <laughs> which uh, I don't think hap will happen in nature. Uh, so I figured, you know, in my planet tank, it would be cool, you know, to have a really thick substrate layer. That way, the roots of my plants can bury themselves and expand as much as they can and grow as big as they can. See, the thing is, when you have a substrate layer that's one inch, two inches, you know, about that much, once the roots from your plants grow out and they hit the bottom of your tank, that's it. Now they can only spread out. And over time, as they spread out, they're going to hit another wall. They're going to hit the side of your tank now. So as that happens, you know, your plants will grow, but they're going to hit a wall eventually. You don't want them to hit a wall. Or at least you want them to hit a wall a lot later in their life, okay? So uh, my whole thought is you don't want that to happen because, you know, your plants will flourish, you know, without a thick substrate layer, but with a thicker substrate layer where they're able to just breathe and let their roots grow, you know, to me, I just feel that that helps them grow so much better. It helps them absorb so much more nutrients and which in return, you know, helps them develop better color, better height, you know, as far as growth and just overall, they're just healthier. And you know what? That's what I'm noticing with my ADA 75P. Like I said, I have about a five inch layer of substrate in my ADA 75P. And you guys have seen it in my videos. My Rotala, my Alternanthera Ranicki Mini, which is typically a slow growing plant. Uh, my Aerial Column plants, my Dwarf Baby Tears, you know, they've grown considerably faster than any other tank I've, than any other planted tank I've had uh, where I've used different substrate and a much thinner substrate layer. So I really believe it helps. Again, there's no like scientific proof behind that. I don't have anything to back that up. But that's just what I believe, and I'm noticing results. So maybe it does work. Maybe it's just a coincidence, you know. But I just believe that a thick substrate layer is really beneficial. And I don't think it matters how thick your substrate layer is. Of course, it. <laughs> you don't want to get crazy. You know, you don't want to have a, you know, 12-inch tall tank and have a substrate layer of, you know, 10 inches. <laughs> I don't think anybody would do that out there, but I'm just saying, you know. Uh, you don't have to get crazy, but a thick substrate layer, you know, I just believe is beneficial. Okay. All right. Next question. So DPK Fish Aquarium says, awesome, Jacob, you're doing a live stream. I'm glad you made it. Well, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Uh, Jacob, please. What plant does okay in a lot of sunlight? All plants can do okay in a lot of sunlight. 
All the plants that I sell on my website, the over 60 different species I sell on my website, they're all grown in a uh, out, well, not outdoor, but in a pond inside my greenhouse under full sun all day. And they grow really, really well. And actually, I've noticed so much better growth under natural sunlight with my plants than any lighting system that I've ever used. But that's because it's natural. You know, natural sunlight, you know, something coming from nature, something that the plants naturally grow under, of course they're going to grow better. Of course they're going to grow like they naturally would in the wild, you know. Um, but it, it's it's absolute, it's it's been really interesting seeing how well you know, plants that I've only grown in aquariums grow outdoors in a pond under full sunlight. It's been a pretty cool experience. Uh, but yeah, pretty much any plant likes, you know, sunlight. But here's the thing, okay? Some plants don't like, you know, a lot of light. So if you're growing plants under sunlight, uh, say like Anubias or whatever, you have to find a way to give them a little bit of shade, you know, or, or, or something like that. So uh, just be careful in in that respect. You know, some plants can grow great under natural sunlight, but they don't like too much of it. Okay, so just make sure you you remember that whenever you're gonna do whatever you're gonna do under natural sunlight. Okay. Um, okay. Next question. <clears throat> uh, good idea to breed angels, and what plants do you recommend for them and tank size and leaders? Um, I actually bred angelfish by accident one time. I didn't really do it purposely, so um. I can't really comment too much on that. Uh, as far as plants that are good for angelfish, um, you don't want plants that are going to just take over your aquarium because angelfish are, are the fish that like to, you know, they need sw they need swimming space. So just make sure, uh, you can have lots of plants in your tank, but just make sure they're not like overgrowing so that, you know, your angelfish don't have a lot of space sw to swim around. That's really all, all I can say in regards to that question, so um okay next question uh let's see do i ever use dirt in my tank of substrate i never have used used dirt um i have a lot of mixed feelings about using dirt in a planted aquarium just because i've heard uh a lot of negative things but i've also heard i've also heard some positive things about using dirt in a planted tank so it's really hard for me to say yes or no that it's a good idea um but yeah, like I said, I've seen some super successful people with dirt and I've seen some people that have just had an absolute nightmare using dirt in their aquariums. Um, but I never have. But maybe I'll try it in the future. I think it'd be a cool, a cool experiment. <laughs> um, okay. Which plant is your best seller? Greetings from Greece. Uh, my best selling plant? Oof. Uh, well, I believe the last time I looked at my analytics page on my website i think the number one page visited on my website was the featured plants page um that could just be a coincidence just because it's called featured plants um i really can't say which one is my most popular though um but just thinking off the top of my head um just remembering you know when i look at my invoices you know uh before i do all my shipping and stuff um i I start to notice plants that are ordered often, you know. So off the top of my head, um, I've seen a lot of people ordering uh, Amazon Swords, uh, Java Fern, Jungle Val. Um, let's see, where are the other ones? Um, well, that's yeah, that's really all I can think of. I mean, I see that mostly on uh, my customers' invoices, so I believe those are pretty much the most popular ones on my website. Okay, next question comes from uh he's uh hi uh, Ar arnold she says hey jacob what are good beginner plants beginner plants would be anubias jungle val amazon sword the ones we just talked about actually uh pearl weed is a great beginner plant grows like crazy it stays true to its name grows like a weed um yeah i would try those plants those are great beginner plants next question comes from uh yeah, yeah these are going by so fast oh my gosh um <laughs> uh let's see uh, okay the um somebody says i have a a question uh i have a plant stem plant that is very bright green a bit yellowish is it because i have two is it because i have a very bright light 39 watts led on an 80 gallon tank um no uh yellowish okay very bright green with a bit of yellowish 
Um, yellowish coloration or yellow coloration in an aquatic plant can pretty much be attributed to a health defect uh, or a, a health issue, I should say. Um, either your plant's not getting um, enough nutrients. It could be because you have it under too much light. Uh, it really just depends on the plant, you know. Uh, that would help me out a lot more if I knew what plant it was, actually. Um, but um, as far as yellowish coloration, you'd want to consider um, um, checking out how much nutrients you're dosing. Uh, of course, the light that your plant is under and if it likes highlight. Um, things like that. And of course, your water quality. If, if your, your water quality is not suitable for... Um, uh, the plants you want to grow, if your pH is too high or low or whatever, uh, you're going to notice uh, discoloration in your plants. So, um, yeah, it, it, could be, uh, it could be a number of issues. <laughs> it's really hard to say. Uh, okay, next question says, Yao Ming says, you always seem to be out of stock of Anubias. You know, Anubias plants are really expensive to order, even wholesale for me. Uh, so I, I don't order too many of them whenever I do order plants from my distributor. Um, and they sell out really quickly. Um, but as I continue to grow in this industry and have more, um, more, um, I mean, simply put more money to, to buy plants, I will uh, definitely stock the more expensive plants. Um, Anubias plants have always been um, w one of the most expensive uh, plants in the hobby. Um, just because they grow so slow and you know it takes a long time for 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 them to be propagated um, even by the wholesaler you know so uh, they'll always be expensive and they'll always be a plant um uh well for now like i said until i i have more money <laughs> they'll always be a plant on my website that will will just that will um sell out really quickly because i just don't have a lot of them available okay all right, guys, we're up to 33 minutes. I usually do these shows for an hour, so we have about 20, so I'm really bad at math, 27, 28 minutes before the show's over. So uh, get those questions in before I am out of here. By the way, happy 4th of July to everybody. Hope you guys are having a great 4th. Okay, next question comes from... Uh, is a Haya Arnold again. She says, what's your favorite fish? My favorite fish is the Asian arowana. Unfortunately, it is illegal to own in the United States. Uh, I really wish that wasn't the case, but you can't control the idiots that run our government, unfortunately. I wish I could, but you know. Um, and please don't get me started on the Asian arowana because I will go on forever. There's, there's so many so many ridiculous things about about why they're illegal um, in the United States and so many misconceptions and it pisses me off whenever I have to talk about it because it, it, it irritates me that a fish that is so readily available and being bred so much and by the thousands if not probably more than that in Asia is illegal here in the United States yet people in Canada can order as many as they want from Asia, <laughs> just across the border. <laughs> and it's like, if they made it legal in the, in the United States, people would actually start breeding them because they want to make money. This fish is like worth a lot of money. So there would be even more of them available in the United States, which I, I talk about their population so much um, because that is the whole issue about why they're illegal in the United States. The the Fish and Game Wildlife Service says, oh, well, they're in danger. There's not too many of them in the wild. Well, freaking A, let people breed them, and then they can introduce them back into the wild. Isn't that how you bring back a population of something that's being extinct? Isn't that how they, they, uh, they, they, brought, they, they helped uh, increase the panda population in China? I mean, at one point, pandas were going to become extinct. You know, what do they do? They put them in captivity. They bred them. And now there's so many, and now they're bringing up, they're bringing back up their numbers. You know, that's what you do, right? But if you make a fish illegal, you take the hobbyists, you know, the potential business owners, the potential breeders out of the, out of the question. You're not helping at all. You're just further, you know, further helping them become extinct, I guess. <laughs> uh, okay, don't get me started on the Asian marijuana because, like I said, I'll go on forever. Next question comes from. Uh, P 
Patrick, he says, do you think overstocking your tank with fast growing with a fast growing plant such as pearl weed would control hair algae? It may help. It may help because when you have a, a lot of plants um, growing in your aquarium and consuming excess nutrients, it, it could help um, prevent the nutrients that contribute to algae growth. Uh, then again, it may not help at all. You know, so I really can't say for sure, but um, I would say give it a try. You know, give it a try. Uh, Ryan J. Goodwin says, Jacob, what brand of CO2 do you recommend? Um, I have a, a commercial, um, well, not a commercial, but like an industrial CO2 system. I use a regulator. I use a 20 pound industrial CO2 tank and a diffuser and all that stuff. Um, um, I get my CO2 filled up by Prax Air. Uh, they're, they, they have a bunch of different locations in the United States, but they're a really great company. And uh, I've been working with them for a number of years, and they're the ones that I rely on to uh, refill my CO2 tanks. Uh, they're affordable as well. I think you can get a 20-pound CO2 tank refilled for like 15, 20 bucks. And of course, we all know how long a 20-pound CO2 tank lasts, especially if you have a small aquarium, it could last years. Um, but yeah, that's where I get my CO2. I get it from Prax Air over here in Southern California. But like I said, they should have locations all throughout the country. All right, next question comes from, uh, what, cause, what causes cyanobacteria? I have no idea, I'm still learning that myself. Uh, let's see, uh, DPK Fish Aquarium says, hey Jacob, would you like to be a special guest on Sir, 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 Gent, Sir, Sir Gent Tank live stream? I believe you would bring so much amazing knowledge to share. I'd love to be a guest on anybody's live stream. I'm uh, I'm one of those YouTubers that doesn't have so much pride and so much, uh, you know, um, <laughs> I'm I'm not somebody that only believes in further growing myself and my own my own YouTube channel. I love working with other YouTubers. I love col collaborating with other YouTubers. I love helping other YouTubers get their feet off the ground and get their channels noticed. Um, anybody that wants to work with me and do anything with me, I, I'm, I'm open to the idea. So, uh, if you want, if you want me to be on your live show, that'd be awesome. I'd love to do that. Um, send me an email. Uh, my email is jacobsaquarium at gmail.com. Give me all the details, you know, times, dates, things like that. And I'll see if I can make it work. My schedule is rather crazy. I work two jobs, own a business, you know, so I'm always doing things. Um, but, uh, I, I'll see if I can squeeze you into my busy schedule. So I would, um, I'd love to do that. It, it sounds like a lot of fun. I've done live streams before with other YouTubers and it's, it's a lot of fun because you get two different perspectives. You know, whenever somebody asks a question, you'll get, uh, one person's opinion and the other person, a person's opinion, which is not a bad thing if, you know, you both disagree on everything, but it's good to get two different opinions, you know, because you get so much information, so much information. So yeah, I, I, I'd love to do that. So, uh, you just let me know. Okay. All right. Next question comes from, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Too fast. Too fast, man. I wish YouTube would slow this, slow the chat down. Um, okay. Uh, ooh, 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 I can't see them all. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, okay. Somebody says, I have a question. I have a rosette sword in a 20 gallon tank with enough fish to give it food and very well lying, very well lighting and it keeps dying. Uh, well, what type of substrate do you have? That, that'd be my first question because Sword plants are really, really heavy root feeding plants. They really like good nutrient rich substrate. Uh, so if you have them in gravel or whatever, um, with no with nutrients in it at all, you need to be adding nutrients in some other form, like between liquid or CO2 or something. Um, so yeah, it, it just depends, but nutrients play a big role with, uh, sword plants. They really uptake a lot of nutrients through their roots. Uh, nutrient rich uh, substrate is the best, but you can get away with growing them in just gravel but you have to make sure you're dosing nutrients in your aquarium's uh, water, you know, to compensate for that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, next question comes from Lord Vader. He says, do you know of any red carpeting plants? I would love dwarf hairgrass in red or something like that. 
The only red carpeting plant that I can think of would probably be Aerial Kowloon Blood Vomit. And I'm not joking, that is the real name of this plant. Um, that plant has mostly green uh, leaves on it, but the center of the plant is red. And it looks really, really cool actually. And as it carpets out, um, it's kind of interesting because you'll have this, this green layer, you know, on the top of your carpet once this plant grows out but then you'll have a bottom layer of red which just totally pops and it looks really really cool um aerial column blood vomit is a very uh difficult plant to obtain though it's pretty rare uh, only a few websites sell it on the internet and they're usually always out of stock um it just seems like aerial column plants in general seem to be really really difficult to obtain uh, but on, off the top of my head as far as a red carpeting plant that's really all I can think of. I'm sure there's others out there. So if uh, any of you in the chat room have any other recommendations, feel free to post them in the comments and uh, help this guy out. Okay, next question. Can I send you DM on Instagram uh, a picture and help me with the plant I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, la, 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 la. Yes, Blood Vomit Terthoria SP. I can't pronounce the scientific name. <laughs> uh, Goku Dragon says, would you recommend a fish tank with plants growing out of the water? Absolutely. Those, those tanks are actually really, really cool. Speaking of that, I'm going to post, I'm going to post a link to a video from Takashi Amano's YouTube channel, God Rest His Soul because they have been uploading some really, really awesome, awesome videos of uh, these tanks uh, where it's like half land and half water. It's really, really cool. So I'm gonna post a link in the chat room to um, that video so you guys can watch it. It's actually really cool and the tanks look beautiful. Um, this. Uh, so watch this video. <clears throat> so watch this video. I just posted it in the chat room. Uh, watch this video. It's a really great example of a tank that is um, uh, half land and half water. It looks really, really cool. Definitely something I'm going to try in the future. Uh, it looks so beautiful. So yeah, check out that uh, video in, in the link that I just posted and um, um, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. But yeah, you, you can definitely have a tank that's uh, you know, half water, you know, plants growing out of the water. It's definitely possible. There are just some things you gotta do to, to keep the plants that are growing out of the water uh, healthy. Uh, some plants cannot, um, cannot do well out of water for prolonged periods of time because they just start to dry out. So they need to be um, under some type of mister or in a high humidity environment. Uh, so that's one thing to consider uh, when you grow plants immersed, which is that's what they call it when a plant is grown halfway in water halfway out of water And also another thing to remember when you grow plants that way is that they look entirely different So if you expect to have an aquatic plant um, Grow the same way and look the same way as it would um, Growing submerged growing it immersed in, in a tank like that. It's not it's gonna look entirely different um, usually what happens when you grow aquatic plants immersed is, uh, the plants tend to be a little bit more, um, more, um, I know it's going to sound funny to say, but they, they tend to be a little, a little bit more thick, you know, <laughs> like the stems become more thick and very, very, uh, strong, you know, less brittle than they were if they were aquatic plants. The leaves even get bigger sometimes in some plants and also the color changes. There's a lot of plants out there that you can grow submerged and get super super red coloration out of them but when you grow them immersed they just grow a plain green color you know so those are all things to consider uh when you have a tank like that and thank you dave for posting the name of that tank i believe it's pronounced plod Paloludarium. <laughs> i know i said that wrong but anyways um yeah so those are things to consider when you have a tank like that okay 
All right, next question. What do you think about DIY CO2? I, I don't recommend it at all. I don't recommend DIY CO2 because it's not a reliable supply of CO2. Eventually, it's gonna, it's gonna stop uh, producing CO2 and, um, <clears throat> and it's nothing that uh, you can time or it's nothing that you can prepare for. So you may not notice uh, CO2 being injected into your aquarium because you're doing a DIY system for too long of a time and then your plants will suffer as a result of that. Um, so DIY CO2, while it's cheap and everything, it's not really a reliable source of CO2. And uh, it's something that requires a lot more upkeep and a lot more care to keep it going than a pressurized CO2 system. Um, but for those of you on a budget, I completely understand uh, the need to use DIY CO2, but just know that uh, you gotta keep an eye on it, you know, cause it's gonna run out pretty quickly unless you have a giant, you know, CO2 reactor that you built or something. Um, but for those of you that have the choice of DIY or pressurized, I always recommend the pressurized CO2 system because they are so reliable. I mean, and, a, and they last so much longer, a 20 pound tank CO2 tank can last you upwards of a year, possibly even longer than that. Um, so if you have the choice, definitely choose a pressurized system because it's just so much easier and such a, such a, a reliable source of CO2. Okay. Um, let's see, next question, someone says, I used the yeast and sugar for almost a year, but I have changed to citric acid and baking soda. Okay, cool. Um, Goku Dragon says, can you type the name of the company where you get your CO2? Thank you. And one more question around how much was your equipment? Okay, I will type the name of the company uh into the chat room prax air there you go now in regards to pricing for co2 equipment this uh this this actually brings me to why i mentioned that um some people choose a diy system because they're on a budget uh pressurized co2 system can be quite pricey and especially if you're buying co2 regulators that are priced so ridiculously like three four hundred dollars like greenleaf aquariums <laughs> Um, I hate to crap on other companies, but Greenleaf Aquarium sells CO2 regulators for ridiculous prices, and I don't know why. Um, there are so many other companies that sell CO2 regulators for far cheaper, and they work just equally the same, and if not, you know, the same, better, you know, whatever. Um, CO2 equipment can be pricey, but um, uh, um, it just depends on the company you buy them from, you know. If you're buying them from Greenleaf Aquariums, be prepared to spend a million dollars. If you're buying your CO2 equipment from Aquatech, be prepared to spend about 150 to 200 dollars. Okay, um, I only used CO2 equipment from Aquatech um, for all my tanks, and everything has worked fine. I actually, okay, believe it or not, I have a CO2 regulator that I bought from them years ago, and I'm still using it today at my nursery and my aquatic plant pond, and the only thing that's happened is a solenoid on it uh, had to be replaced, but that is about it. It has been super reliable, and the company Aquatech is actually super reliable as well. Uh, when I had that issue with my um, uh, solenoid, I sent it to them. They replaced it for free and shipped it back to me for free, my regulator that is. Um, so yeah, I would recommend Aquatech. They are pretty affordable when it comes to CO2 equipment, but as far as the cost, you know, between the diffuser, the regulator, the tank, uh, the CO2 proof tubing, all that combined, it can be a little pricey. Um, if you get a five pound tank, you're probably looking at about 50 bucks for the tank. If you get a, um, a Greenleaf Aquar or an, <laughs> an Aquatech CO2 regulator, you're probably looking around $100 for that. So we're up to 150. A good diffuser will run you about 30 bucks, or now we're up to 180. Um, CO2 proof tubing is probably like 10, 15 bucks. So now we're a little bit over 200 bucks. Um, uh, yeah. So maybe between 200 and $250 is what you can expect to spend on a good CO2 system. Okay. All right. Uh, we got nine minutes left of the show. Get those questions in guys before I'm out of here. Um, okay. Next question comes from unholy orders. <laughs> 
He says, hey, Jacob, what is the best substrate for swords and java ferns but black in color? Best substrate for swords and java ferns with black, black in color. AJ Aqua Soil. That's all I'm going to say. It's the best substrate ever. All right, Valley Fish says, how hot has the pond gotten this year? You know what? It's actually funny. Um, inside the greenhouse, um, temperatures have reached as high as 120 degrees. But since the pond is such a large body of water, 600 gallons, uh, what happens is, is the water is actually really cool at night because it's not too hot in the greenhouse. So the water cools down to about 70 degrees around there during the summertime, of course. Um, but as it heats up during the day, since the pond is such a large body of water, it takes so long for the water to heat up. By the time it's nighttime again, the pond would have reached its max temperature of about 80, 86 degrees. And believe it or not, okay, I grow all my plants in my pond and the plants being exposed to that, that, those, that high of a temperature, you think there'd be some problems, but surprisingly, I haven't noticed any problems at all. There's I'm, none of my plants are melting, nothing like that. Uh, maybe I've just been lucky. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I haven't noticed any issues with my plants, but, uh, yeah, as far as how hot it's gotten, it's gotten to about 120 degrees in the greenhouse, but, uh, the, the pond does not heat up that much because it's just so big. It takes a while for all that water to heat up. Okay. Um, let's see. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> I don't feel like answering it. <laughs> Drink water, guys. Water is life. All right. Um. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Trin, Trini, Trin, Trini Mon says, does CO2 affect your fish? A lot of people say it does, or I should say some people say it does. Some people swear not to use it, not to use CO2. I choose to not believe that. <laughs> um, I've used CO2 in a lot of my planted tanks over the years, and I have not noticed any adverse effects with my fish. No weird uh, things happening with my fish because I use CO2. Um... Yeah, but um, as somebody is already mentioning in the chat room, if you inject too much CO2, well, definitely, you can starve your tank of so much oxygen that your fish will just die. Um, and also, some pe somebody's, somebody is also saying that CO2 can lower your pH. I have heard about that as well, so that's one thing to consider. Uh, but that's why you just don't inject too much. You know, I've seen this happen so many times. Uh, somebody is new to the hobby. They set up a pressurized CO2 system for the first time. They turn that thing all the way up so there's tons of CO2 coming out of their diffuser. And they think that's great because the more CO2, the better, the faster their plants are going to grow. Absolutely not. <laughs> um, believe it or not, guys, okay, uh, you don't need to inject a ton of CO2. You know, just a little bit, just a little bit of CO2, you know, just a, just a steady stream of CO2 bubbles. That's it. You don't need to have like a, like your CO2 diffuser doesn't need to look like an air pump with an air stone. I'll just say that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question. We got five minutes left of the show, guys. Get those questions in. Uh, la, la, la. I'm going to try to answer as many as I can. Um, and Texa five says, do you close your CO2 at night? Yes. My CO2 is on a timer. That's why my regulator has a solenoid. The solenoid is actually responsible for shutting the CO2 on and off. Um, so my CO2 regulator is plugged into a timer and it's set to, to turn on the CO2 two hours before the lights come on. And then, uh, two hours before the lights go off. And I have the CO2 go on before the lights come on in my tank. And by the way, the lights are on a separate timer. So I have two timers uh, set up to my system. Um, the CO2 is set to go on before the lights come on uh, because uh, that helps get CO2 levels up to up to par, up to the, you know, where they should be. So by the time the lights come on, uh, the plants are in a CO2 rich environment and they're ready to start growing for the day, you know. Um, 
there's a lot of different articles on the on uh, the internet that that talk about why you should have your CO2 come on before your lights. So I recommend doing some more research about that. Um, but yeah, I do turn off my CO2 at night because there there's no reason to keep your CO2 on at night when your plants are are or, or when your lights are off. Your plants are not growing. They're not photosynthesizing. They don't need CO2. And actually, since your plants aren't consuming CO2 at night, if you continue to inject CO2 at night, uh, you'll actually have an excess of CO2 in your aquarium, which will starve your tank of oxygen and kill your fish. So it's actually very important that your CO2 is turned off at night or you do something else if you can't turn your CO2 off, like add an air stone or extra water movement or something to get rid of all that extra CO2. Uh, but then again, it would just be a big waste of money to have CO2 run all night and then also add an air stone to get rid of the CO2. So having your CO2 system on a timer is very, very important and, um, you know, um, will help prevent a lot of issues. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay. Next question. Some, somebody says, did I lose weight? Yes, I did. <laughs> At my heaviest, I weighed uh, almost 300 pounds and I've lost about 55 pounds, uh, from diet and exercise over the course of three years. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm much happier now. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Uh, thank you for all the great videos and tank info. I appreciate all your info. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, okay. Two minutes. Two mementos. Phoenix Planet Plus 24 7. What are my thoughts? Uh, that's an LED light. I haven't heard too many good things about that lighting system. Uh, I remember one customer came into the nursery and actually told me he he used a Phoenix light and uh, something happened with it or something and um, he tried to contact the company and I guess the company blamed him for the light just not working properly. Um, I usually don't base a company's, uh, you know, rating, whatever you want to call it, uh, just based on one customer's uh, testimonial. Uh, but I'm just saying that's what I've heard. Um, supposedly, this customer did not have a good experience with the Phoenix light. Um, and I've heard other negative things about Phoenix fixtures, so I really don't know whether to recommend them or not recommend them. Um, but if it was my choice, I wouldn't buy one just because they, they don't seem too good to me you know just based on what i've heard okay um all right guys we got like seconds to go before the show's over so uh Ermit singh says why don't you sell monte carlo on your website um i will be selling uh, more varieties of plants on my website in the very near future it's just that for right now uh, my holding system my 600 gallon pond is pretty much maxed out you know as far as the amount of plants i have in there uh, but I am building a bigger one, so I will be able to hold more plants and more different species of plants. So I'll have a much bigger variety of plants to offer on my website in the very near future. Okay, so stay tuned for that. All right, guys. Well, it is that time. It has been one hour. That is um, that is the full length of this show. Thank you guys so much for coming to the live stream. I really, really appreciate it. It really means a lot to me, guys. It really does that you come back time and time again to watch my live streams, watch my videos and, you know, ask me questions and post comments. And I, I just really, really appreciate all the love and support. And, you know, you guys allow me to do what I love every single day of my life. And I couldn't be more thankful for that. Um, so thank you so much, everybody. <clears throat> if you guys are interested in aquatic plants, you want to buy any any of the aquatic plants that I talked about in this live stream? They're available on my website right now, JacobsAquarium.com. Uh, shipping is only eight dollars to anywhere in the United States. Prices are really affordable with most plants uh, priced at two ninety nine. Some sometimes the cheapest on the internet. So great prices, lots of plants to choose from. JacobsAquarium.com is is my website if you would like to buy plants from me here in the US. I don't ship internationally, unfortunately. Uh, maybe I will in the future. I hope I can I can make that work someday. Um, also, don't forget to check me out, guys, on Facebook, um, uh, YouTube, if you're watching this live stream somewhere else. Uh, Twitter and Instagram, all my social media links will be in the description below once this live stream is uploaded as a pre-recorded version on my channel. Once again, 
thank you everybody for watching this live stream i really appreciate it i love you guys so much happy fourth of july everybody and i will see you next time